we will start. And uh, this presentation will be uh, teamwork. Uh, Erika and Marco will interview, maybe also Jan. Um, what we want to present here, maybe it's uh, the thing that we should start uh, with uh, at the beginning of this week because it's the focus of this uh, grant. Um, and it's the relation between neurotics uh, and evaluative conditioning. And uh, why I think it's important to study this? It's a, a common common knowledge that people who score high on neuroticism are less satisfied with their life. And if you uh, think in terms of uh, terminology, less satisfied it's an evaluation. And from this perspective, it's a bit strange. Of course, there are so, so several reasons, maybe environmental reasons, but it's a bit strange that some people, if uh, they have the same environment, are less set satisfied than others. Uh, and in a way, it, it means that when they encounter conditional stimuli, and there are plenty of conditions of stimuli to be conditioned, maybe it's something, uh, let's say, wrong with them, that they uh, are more biased toward uh, judging things in the negative uh, uh, terms. Uh, and as uh, you have seen before, neuroticism is not a disease, it's not a mental uh, health problem, but it is indeed a, um, a risk factor for internalized psychopathology from various reasons, and you have seen uh, the common models or the risk, the vulnerability models, and so on. So, uh, if the, the neuroticism is this, then the general idea would be to uh, see if in a EC framework, a relative conditioning framework, we can uh, uh, see uh, whether neuroticism moderates this respect. In which case, in which sense? Maybe they elicit a stronger change in the negative side, but not necessarily in the positive side when they uh, learn something. Uh, and this would mean maybe the EC effect slope would be steeper for high uh, pe people with high neuroticism when they evaluate negative uh, conditioned stimulus. Or maybe it's an asymmetrical effect. Uh, uh, for instance, in counter conditioning, uh, they can uh, uh, be more fast in changing from positive to negative, but not so fast when changing from negative to positive or they, ha they may be more eager to, to rely on this evaluation. And uh, this could be, for instance, in halo effect or in horde effect, or a kind of generalizability effect. So if they learn something about the person that is negative, they may be more willing to infer some negative uh, aspects about uh, the same person, even those were not uh, known facts. And or, and this is a different story, and it was a Gebauer and Vogel and Hutter story, the only article published in this, that neuroticism uh, is more related to uh, being sensitive to any evaluation, even if it's a positive or negative uh, uh, in the direction. Um, but you can go even farther from this perspective on evaluative conditioning, and you can uh, look at uh, the operant evaluative conditioning or the attribute conditioning, uh, other types of conditioning that could be also maybe uh, moderated by neuroticism. And why? Because if we understand, uh, it's more like an analogy between attentional bias and this kind of evaluative learning bias. So the, even if maybe from practical reason it would be more difficult than to, to uh, design ways to stop this bias occurring, it's still an important knowledge to know that uh, people maybe uh, react more intensively or evaluate more bias, uh, bias in, in, uh, more, uh, in a biased manner the information they receive. And you can uh, come out with stories how 
uh, how you make the, the, the step or the link between neuroticism and anxiety or depression, which are the most common internalized psychopathology that occur usually in people scoring high neuroticism. And so the starting point was that article, and another important idea we put in the gram is the weak situation context, what, which means, for instance, if it's a funeral uh, situation, probably all people are upset, and it doesn't matter if a person is less or more neurotic or if it's a happy event, but in more uh, gray or ambiguous cases, uh, this internal variable, the organism variable, uh, has more importance because it's a kind of uh, um, sensitivity to specific signals, to process specific signals. And if there is a moderation effect, where well, you can look at this moderation effect, and I put here the moderation effect between the neuroticism uh, and uh, the pairing of US, so for one is to be the characteristic of the pain. For instance, the contingency rate could vary. One, one, one <coughs> way would be to be always 100% a positive association or a negative association. Another thing is that maybe 70% is positive and 30% is negative. So when you receive mixed evaluations in a way, uh, based on that uh, stim stimuli. Um, if you look at the end, you can also look at which uh, facets. If you look at the unconditional stimulus, uh, we had uh, several things in mind. The, the, the one is the ambivalent US, which means, uh, uh, in general, all studies conducted in uh, volatile conditioning use either positive or negative stimuli. But uh, we saw a study uh, also in which uh, they used uh, a, new, a created image that contained both positive and negative aspects. So a kind of Q, comp computing Q image uh, where you can look either at the positive side or at the negative side uh, of, the, of the image. Uh, Marco and his team uh, in Italy, they, uh, they focus on the arousal of the um, unconditional stimulus. And another perspective that nobody uh, taking so uh, so far, but uh, my younger colleagues want uh, are very eager to go to that way. If uh, the US is self-relevant or not self-relevant or self-related, because maybe it's also something uh, uh, in terms of information. But I'm not going to uh, to go there. It was uh, discussed yesterday. So the negative uh, could be about the self, about the world, about the others, about the future. So, and in, in, neg in neuroticism, usually it's a negative about the self, not always, but most of the time, together maybe with other kind of negativeness. Um, but you can also look at the characteristic of CS, and uh, here is another idea. Uh, it's more like, a, so if you condition a CS with a positive US, and another CS with a negative US. But these are more like, I don't know, abstract matrices, like in Raven. And you uh, end up with a new CS that it's a kind of combination of these two images. How they will rate it? More positively or more, ne more negatively? Because they, they were not shown before, so they were not paired with another stimuli, but they are new, uh, uh, of course. This is, has to do with uh, a similar, uh, similar features that this conditional stimulus says, but again, on which one, which one you take, the positive one or the negative one in your evaluation, this could be maybe another interesting idea to go through. And the second main question is if we show in which situation uh, the neuroticism moderates the evaluative conditioning effect, it's why we uh, find this moderation. And this is more like a cognitive uh, style of studies, looking, I don't know, maybe if uh, the contingency awareness has to do with this, maybe they recall more negative pairing than positive pairing, or if uh, attention bias has to do, and maybe we use eye tracking technology to see if uh, they focus more on the negative features of the stimulus, particularly if it's uh, ambiguous, 
US and so on. So interpretation bias, we can look at the relational qualifier. I think it's very important, this relational qualifier. And uh, it's strange that when we asked in some other studies, we're not related to neuroticism. I, I found all kinds of relations. Uh, so uh, some, some people would say, okay, this means this. This is the trans abstract translation of this. So this is equal to this. Other people would say, you show me these images to influence me uh, uh, how I judge uh, the CS. So US will cause the CS. But other participants said, uh, you show me the CS to calm me down because uh, the upsetting nature of the US. So this is another strategy. The CS will influence the US. And there are many other. I, um, it's just because they have uh, they are both uh, both uh, uh, black and white, or I don't know. Both the, so other people just focused on some other uh, similarity uh, between two st stimulus. But again, I think this kind of information also could affect the the the, the relevance of uh, the moderation effect. And in the following minutes. We'll present, let's see, four cases. First, I'll, I'll uh, let uh, Erika and Marco to present uh, their uh, results from the study, and then I'll come back with the Romanian uh, free studies we have conducted. And, uh, of course, we are looking forward to hear your opinion, your suggestions, and so on. Florin has already, uh, already told that we test the moderating effect of uh, neuroticism uh, in the C paradigm. And um, as Florin has already told, we uh, use uh, C, uh, within the EC paradigm, we use uh, US uh, that uh, differ both in their valence and the arousal. Um, our study um, was uh, a within, uh, is based on a within subject design and uh, um, it consists of uh, two main steps. In the first step, uh, um, participants were asked to complete the survey for the assessment of uh, neuroticism. And uh, here there are uh, the scale we use uh, for uh, the measure of uh, neuroticism. Uh, should I read it? Uh, so, uh, we also insert the Exaco 16 because uh, we want to uh, explore the moderating aspect of personality in general. Uh, then, uh, after the, the survey, uh, participant went through the C paradigm and um, the paradigm consists of uh, uh, five phases. I don't remember the exact, but at the beginning, uh, in the preconditioning phase, uh, participants uh, were asked to rate 20 uh, stimuli, uh, which was uh, uh, grayscale fractals. Uh, and uh, after that, the program automatically selects uh, four, um, four pictures for each participant. And uh, for a uh, picture that participant uh, have rated as a neutral. So uh, each participant uh, had uh, four uh, specific uh, CS. Uh, in the conditioning phase, uh, these uh, uh, four uh, CS were paired to the US. Uh, the US uh, uh, were uh, four different pictures that we select from the apps. And uh, one US was uh, positive and eye arousing, uh, the first uh, image. Uh, another US was positive and low arousing, the second one. 
the third US was negative and high arousing, the third uh, picture, and uh, the last US was negative and low arousing. Uh, the CS and uh, US pairs uh, were fixed and random, so uh, the pair was uh, always the same and was presented uh, in a random uh, order. Uh, each pair was presented by eight times uh, for a total of 32 trials. Uh, here there is an example uh, of uh, possible pairs. Okay, uh, after the uh, conditioning phase, uh, there was uh, the uh, CS evaluation, so um, participants were asked to um, indicate uh, how, ple how pleasant or unpleasant was uh, the uh, CS. Uh, after this evaluation, uh, there was the um, contingency awareness, so uh, we present the CS in the, in the middle of the screen and we ask the participant to uh, indicate which was the paired US. And after this phase, there was the last phase, uh, so we ask a participant to uh, evaluate the US they uh, see in, uh, the, they saw in, the pre in the conditioning phase. Um, our sample, our final sample, consists of uh, 242 participants. And uh, uh, now I'll show some preliminary analysis. Uh, uh, first of all, we uh, want to uh, check if uh, uh, there was uh, an EC effect. So to test this, uh, to answer this question, we uh, run uh, a mixed model uh, where, uh, in which we use, uh, uh, we, uh, we test both the uh, simple effect of valence, the simple effect of arousal, and their interaction. Uh, we found uh, an EC effect, so we found that uh, uh, people tend to prefer CS when they uh, were paired with a positive US. And we also found a simple effect of arousal, so, but we found that uh, uh, people tend to prefer uh, CS when they uh, were paired with uh, low arousing US. And uh, this is the interaction between, um, between uh, uh, valence and uh, arousal. And uh, this interaction tells us that uh, when, uh, um, uh, um, when the uh, CS uh, uh, is paired with uh, a um, high arousing US, the effect of violence is uh, stronger. Okay. Then uh, we want to test, uh, uh, to test uh, if uh, uh, there is a moderating effect of neuroticism, neuroticism on the EC effect. Uh, we, uh, first of all, run a Pearson correlation analysis um, and uh, between uh, uh, the neuroticism scale scales and the EC effect. Um, for the moment, uh, we focus on the first column. And uh, we can see that uh, not, only, not uh, all the neuroticism scales uh, significantly correlate with the EC effect. Uh, but the scale that significantly correlate with the EC effect are especially anxiety and uh, vulnerability, the anxiety of uh, Exaco, BF5, IPIP, and uh, uh, vulnerability of uh, IPIP. So we decided to focus on this uh, scale. And we also decided uh, to, um, to focus on balance because uh, uh, we see that also arousal uh, um, has a, a significant effect, but the effect of violence uh, is uh, stronger. So for 
uh, our preliminary analysis, we decide to focus only on the aspect of violence. Uh, okay, uh, so we um, we run for um, to test whether there, there, there is a moderating effect of neuroticism. We run uh, uh, other a series of uh, mixed models where we look for the simple effect of violence, the simple effect of neuroticism, and uh, their interaction. So we confirm the existence of uh, a EC effect, so people uh, prefer uh, CS when they are paired with positive US. We did not find uh, any uh, significant effect of uh, the neuroticism facets, but we found a uh, significant uh, interaction between uh, violence and uh, neuroticism. And uh, these interactions tell us that uh, um, the, high, uh, the higher is the level of uh, anxiety and uh, vulnerability, uh, the, um, the, higher, um, the higher is the EC effect. Okay, uh, we, uh, I come back to these slides because uh, we also um, um, explore another um, uh, strategy of uh, analysis for the data. So we uh, decide to um, investigate the moderating effect of a neuroticism when we consider uh, only uh, eye arousing stimuli. Um, and also when we consider only low arousing stimuli. So we run the same analysis uh, when uh, separately for high arousing stimuli and low arousing stimuli. US. Mm. Only to add one thing to this. Before Flori was talking about weak situation, if you remember the results of the, the value condition effect, the high arousal is the strong situation, not the weak situation. It's the situation which there is the largest effect. Yet, that's the situation which personality has a strong effect. It depends also on how they define weak situation. Yeah, weak situation is defined yeah. normally as a lack of a situation which uh, you know, is you know, the lowest effect in this sense, lowest in this sense. But anyway, you can discuss yeah. this, but just to say that it's not a weak situation from the perspective of the Yeah. Okay. So. Um, Okay, here I'll show you, um, okay, we run so a mixed model uh, in which we, uh, we test, uh, we, we look for, uh, we test the effect of violence, the effect of uh, neuroticism and their interaction as uh, the model uh, showed you before. Uh, we confirm the presence of uh, an EC, uh, EC effect. Uh, we um, none of uh, um, with the exception of emotionality of the exaco 16 we uh, did not find any significant effect of uh, uh, neuroticism face it uh, but we uh, find a um, significant interaction between neuroticism and uh, the C effect, and the interaction uh, is uh, similar to uh, the interaction found in the other model. So, um, the, the, the higher is anxiety and vulnerability, the, the higher is the C effect. Uh, here, there is an example of interaction. Okay, and uh, we run the same model. Uh, when, uh, with, when we consider uh, low arousing US, uh, we confirm the presence of uh, EC, a, a significant EC effect. Uh, we uh, 
do not find a significant effect of uh, neuroticism phases. And uh, we uh, also do not find uh, a significant interaction between uh, valence and uh, neuroticism. That's the end of our presentation. Ah, sorry. <laughs> we have uh, seen the first study, the, the, the second and the third and the fourth are much more synthetic. Mm -hmm. It's uh, one study per slide, probably, to have more time for discussions. Uh, so, in the second study, what we have done was to uh, look at uh, four different types of uh, unconditional stimuli, uh, of pairings, actually. So, uh, some conditional stimulus was, were, were paired with uh, positive U.S.s, some with negative U.S.s, some with neutral U.S.s, based on international affective picture system and uh, some uh, were paired with this kind of ambivalent images there we had the uh, two stimuli per condition in which uh, one image has rated positive another negative maybe this one is not necessarily so uh, ambivalent because the size of the head of the dog is higher than the size of uh, uh, the pony but still uh, the uh, what we found was that, uh, as we expected, in this kind of uh, two different type of uh, uh, information, uh, unconditional stimuli, the uh, moderation effect of neuroticism was higher. We found a moderation effect in two circumstances. We found for uh, negative uh, CSs, um, which means neurotic people tended to rate CSs uh, 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 high neurotic people tended to rate uh, uh, CSs that were paired with negative VSs more negatively than low neurotics and for uh, for uh, for the ambivalent situation where the effect was even stronger we didn't use a mixed linear model uh, we fought for different for various reasons. First of all, I'm not sure if we had two stimuli or eight stimuli. Uh, maybe this is a question that you can answer because there are four conditions, and each condition had two CSs. And I'm not sure if there are enough CSs to do uh, the analysis for the CSs. And uh, the second thing uh, was uh, that we wanted to uh, look at the linear trend. Uh, so we divided the neuroticism in four categories, four qualitative categories. Uh, very high neuroticism, uh, those who score 1.5 standard deviation of all. High neuroticism uh, between 0.5 and 1.5, average between 0.5 plus and minus, and so on. And uh, we end up with this linear trend in this uh, situation. Uh, and the effect was replicated on four facets, anxiety, depression, vulnerability, and uh, shyness. In uh, another study, we uh, continue with this idea of ambigu ambivalence, ambiguity, but in terms of contingency rate. So we had three conditions, one uh, in which CSs were paired with positive VSs, another with negative VSs, and a third condition that was, let's say, the, of target interest. Uh, we paired 50% uh, of the time with positive VSs and 50% of the time with negative VSs. And in, each, uh, in this study, we also conducted uh, more, uh, we, uh, we asked particip participants to fill in more questionnaires related to neuroticism. We included uh, neuroticism from NeoPR, from Hexaco, from BFI, and from BIS, uh, the BIS scale, which is a kind of anxiety scale. Uh, but also, we included neuro neuroticism related state measures like uh, negative effect from PANAS mm -hmm. and uh, 10 adjectives from Hexaco that you will send us. Uh, again, for measuring how they felt at that particular moment. And uh, 
uh, what it's interesting that uh, first of all the, the state measure didn't uh, do anything so they didn't influence uh, in any way the results but the trade uh, measures not the state ones uh, they had the, this interaction effect again uh, in all cases except for hexaco but even in hexaco two of the skills anxiety and uh, fear were uh, significant uh, moderators but uh, sentimentality and dependency which are a bit different than in content they were not uh, we uh, in all cases anxiety was uh, the facets that uh, became relevant as a, as a uh, moderator but this is also maybe because anxiety was found in all scales uh, for instance vulnerability it's uh, which is another uh, scale that we found uh, they have a strong effect and you find also it's only in neo or uh, in the epip version but not in hexac or bpi or other so maybe it's not only anxiety but anxiety it's uh 100% <laughs> moderated in all, in all cases in, in both labs um, so uh, even here uh, we didn't find an interaction effect necessarily for positive or negative CSs uh, but only for those who are 50% uh, paired with positive or negative so for the weak situation we found uh, the relevance of neuroticism more important and in the fourth uh, study that uh, the first two were conducted by uh, Katarina Munguez and the third one who's, who was which was conducted by uh, Florina um, she took a different approach uh, it was the first time we used uh, pre-test and post-test because we uh, we we made an assumption in all our previous studies that the CS are neutral based on other studies we have conducted and so on and on of course on the data uh, but in this case we used uh, pre-ratings pre of uh, CSs and then uh, post-test of CSs uh, we first measured uh, the neopia or uh, neuroticism scale and hexap emotionality scale and uh, we uh, measured not only if they like or not like the CSs because the CSs in this time were people from uh, Karolin, uh, Karolinska database or so not fractals but we also uh, asked them to rate if they think that person is friendly, trustworthy, vulnerable, and calm and we had uh, actually kind of uh, nine point scale with uh, if it was uh, the opposite of calm of was anxious, I don't know, the opposite of uh, trustworthy was unreliable or something. Um, so uh, we use this kind of uh, attributes, uh, but we didn't give them any information on these attributes. We, we only want to see if the EC effect. Uh, also generalized or has an effect, a hollow effect, a horn effect on, uh, on the following uh, rates. And what we obtain a very strong uh, generalization effect, even if it's maybe not correct generalization effect. So the higher it was the EC effect on participant, the more uh, it was uh, uh, reflected in the way they characterize that person. So people who uh, so, let's say, CS, positive CSs, they, uh, they, fought, they are friendly, calm, and so on. And those who, uh, who saw negative CSs, uh, they characterize those CSs more negatively. And it was very strong effect. Uh, in correlation, it was 0.52. Uh, so almost, uh, I think, any question you can ask, maybe <laughs> it's a kind of hollow effect. Um, but uh, another interesting aspect was that this generalization effect it's at the edge we only had 80 participants 
but it was at the age of being significant. In some cases, it was significant. Again, the case of anxiety. Uh, I don't know if you see that on, on these slides, but people who are high in anxiety, both in, uh, in um, Neopiar and Hexaco, have the, a bit steeper. I'm not sure if it's necessarily steeper, but it's the one that it's more uh, intense in the correlation between the EC effect and the generalization effect. So they not only, uh, from the previous studies, let's say, are more eager to, to uh, see that negative uh, aspect, but they are also more uh, likely to generalize, to, <laughs> to see more negative than it is uh, from the data, at least. Yes? Can you just say again, what, what are your CSs and your USs? Yes, uh, the CSs were uh, uh, pictures of participants, uh, let's say, Bob, Kevin, uh, yeah, from the Karolinska data set uh, in the neutral image. Neutral yeah, yeah. And the US's? Uh, balance pictures taken from that. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, so, uh, if I, <laughs> I was going to open the discussion with some uh, general findings, it seems that neuroticis moderates EC, particularly in those instances in which pairing, pairing or US are congruent with the weak situation, in my opinion, but we can discuss that. Anxiety seems to be the facet that seems to contribute most to this uh, uh, moderating effect. Uh, and uh, here is uh, maybe a story that I have. I also have a bit of background in clinical psychology because I was trained also as a cognitive uh, behavioral psychotherapist. And there is a theory in terms with anxiety, which is called the intolerance to uncertainty. So people are more anxious because they, are, uh, they don't uh, like things that are not in their control. And then they worry, and because the worry is a kind of uh, coping mechanism, maladaptive, of course, but a coping mechanism to stop, uh, to, to try to control it. Have you take the luggage? Have you put that? Have you so? Uh, and uh, because of this, maybe in this kind of ambiguous situation, because we mainly focus on an ambiguous uh, or ambivalent situation. Uh, they tend to see a bit more the negative part, and also if the study will uh, will uh, confirm that what I said before, they are more eager to make more assumptions about other things that are not under their observation that are congruent to this negative assumption. And this is a kind of vicious circle that could maybe. Uh, at some point, with some other aspects uh, interacting, uh, leading to anxiety, for instance. From an anxiety trait to anxiety as a visit. Okay. So do you have any, because the anxiety idea suggests that it's all on the negative side, that, that the, on the side when you have negative QSs, yes. do you have any possibility to check in your data whether this is uh, it's mostly on the negative side or also on the positive side? Yeah, uh, for, for anxiety I think we checked and uh, I think it was always on the negative side, or is it? So you did but, basically your analysis for the... Uh, but indeed for some facets from neuroticism we also find that strange effect that they also are more uh, rating more positive the positive CSs, let's say that the CSs that are pair uh, positive. For our data, we also checked informally, and uh, no, there is no evidence of this. Then it's that the distance between the two is larger. So if we found what I mean, of course we don't know for sure, but the, the one inference we can make for that is that they are not sensitive to evaluations as such. So they are more negative, on the negative side, more positive the positive side. Which could suggest, in line with what you were saying, that it's a question of reducing uncertainty. But Yeah, but this is also, uh, this is from arousal perspective. Yeah, so if it's a something arousal, arousal it's either more good or more bad. 
uh, arousal, I mean, mm -hmm. my the intuition is that arousal means something that is even more, let's say, motivating as it were. So something which creates condition for which you act even stronger. Because arousal is even more warm, as it were, from the perspective of the participant. But I think that there are different things going on. But one point would seem to be that, at least for our data, there is no suggestion that it's only about the negative side, yeah, yeah. but it suggests that it is hypersensitivity to violence, which means that wherever they share the, the links, there is a stronger, a larger effect. Yeah. At least this is when we look at the data separately for positive and negative, they are both changing. Yeah. But in our cases, uh, at least for this kind of ambiguous images, it was always the more negative. More the negative. negative yes. For uh, positive or negative uses, we found the mixed findings. For instance, in the first study, as you saw, they were more eager to evaluate in negative manner than uh, people scoring low neuroticis. But in the second study, it didn't replicate the, this main effect, let's say. Yeah. So it's uh, in line with the arousal. Um, talk. So yeah. maybe they are, I don't think they are inconsistent because it, uh, something it says about, uh, or let's say, a kind of biasing information, and then one about the calibrating the processing. I don't know. So both are important. Just to give perhaps a concrete sense of what does it mean, different facets have an impact or not in neuroticis. If I go to some example of items, mm -hmm. so an item of depression is I often feel down. That doesn't moderate anything. An item of anxiety is that I worry often. That moderates. Yeah. Which is so it's not a generic kind yeah, of thing. But, but this is also. In a way, when you meet a new stimulus, it's a, uh, the easy procedure is a new thing. So depression, in theory, has to do with something that happened in the past, in more, in more anxiety with what happens in the next moment. So what, how can I cope with this situation I'm facing now? So I think anxiety has a, an advantage in this perspective because it's about the future, in a way, and how do you uh, process the uncertainty in a way. Because no, this speaks to what Emmanuel was asking today. I said, traits or faces? And this kind of analysis would say, no, no, faces. Yeah, faces, yeah, it's not more like anxiety. Because traits are yeah, different things. Faces are different things. But I also, vulnerability, uh, vulnerability uh, should be explored, I think, more. Yeah, vulnerability. Different. Also, for instance, an example of vulnerability is I go out, I panic often. Or, I often, uh, and sometimes, I'm overtaken by events. This is vulnerability. Is it related to, in, in peer conditioning, there is a literature on uh, uncertainty and tolerance or something? Like that. Yeah. Is it related to that? The worry, the panic? Yeah, of course. It's very much related. The, the worry, it's the, so the consequence of uncertainty tolerance. So that's so. Might might that be the same? Because it's especially in the context of peer conditioning and avoidance, mm -hmm. that it seems to be relevant. So is that what we are capturing here, rather than neuroticism as a yeah. more label? Yeah, I think so. Yeah. So probably, if if we were to be more efficient, we should move to anxiety at least. I try to kick this back from young slide today. Okay, this is it's a moderator. Does it say something about the, 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 the main effect? And I think it can say something about the main effect. Because one can think of, you know, I mean, A, this is a consistent value. It's across different countries. It's across different paradigms. So this is really, I think, something robust. You can hold up on this. And so what does it mean that anxiety Moderates about the conditioning effect. 
it could imply that the, the, when you have a situation which you have to evaluate the value, so that you have stigma in front of you, one reason why people evaluate is because of reduced uncertainty in the environment. Yeah. No, no, but not, not from a perspective, from a precise perspective, not to, from a conditional mm -hmm. perspective, from a value condition perspective. I mean, as part of the paradigm as such. So it becomes something like, okay, what is about learning? What is about the value to learning? What is about the value condition? Is why people engage in that? Because it's a way to reduce the uncertainty in the environment, which has a series of implications. That's what I, it's a possible implication of this kind of design. Yeah. As you discussed yesterday, it relates to this idea of, of pairings being, being a low diagnostic cue for, for making influences. So if two things go, if something neutral goes together with something good, and you have nothing else to go on, then okay, you might conclude that the neutral thing is also good. But that's low validity. Some people might be more willing to make this low validity inference. If you're if you are having a hard time tolerating uncertainty, well then you make then you're happy to make those inferences even though they are not so strong. So that might uh, might be something that's happening, and you could make predictions on the basis of that. Could say that if you give uh, certainty, yeah, so when, when there is more more uh, diagnostic information, then uh, well. Ratings are no longer taken into account, and I mean the pairings are no longer taken into account. You, you will not see differences in the related to the Did you ask the people to evaluate the unconditions, uh, the, the, yeah, the positive and negative similar? Because I, I think that uh, people that are high in neuroticism and anxiety should evaluate them more extremely also. Mm -hmm. Maybe people that are depressed less extremely because when, when you are depressed you don't have the emotional reactions sure. to life basically. Mm -hmm. So um, yeah, we, can, we can check. I think Katarina have, uh, have looked at this uh, aspect. No, no? no, you didn't have that? No. Okay, because it was a point also raised by, uh, by uh, Yannick uh, mm -hmm. at some point uh, in, for the study with ambivalent uh, yeah. analysis, because how did they perceive? We asked mm -hmm. them, so it's easy to see if they perceive it more negatively or yeah. more positively. Because there are really two different mm -hmm. whether it's the, the, they react less mm -hmm. or they react the same way, but they mm -hmm. think that they perceive it less. Yeah. And, but did you find that uh, you didn't find any uh, moderation by depression? No. Because I would expect that it's moderate, but in the other direction, but it didn't. We find only when I'm with anxiety and honesty, which is also something. Yeah, we also find honesty. Yeah, yeah, we find honesty. So we so were wondering, that's another thing which we did not emphasize here, but already there are a few words with Jan about it. But um, if you look at the specific content of the stimuli, they seem to be something which might elicit, I mean, the uh, US, they might elicit. Think falls like this is unfair, this is unjust. You know, like there was a woman with a blue eye or a kid that is crying. So you think that there is some kind of power structure going on, somebody taking advantage of it. And people who are, I mean, this is a speculation, of course, but the point this could explain why it's moderated by honesty, because honesty is in little differences how much people are sensitive to justice, fairness, and things like this which opens the possibility that also the content of the U.S. markets yeah, and the fit of the content with the trade. So some content might be more relevant for some people. Like if you are at a party and the U.S. have to do with party, it could be more relevant for extraordinary people. If it's about tasks, it could be more relevant for content. If it's about interpersonal aspect like injustice and so on, it's more relevant for Honestly, you really think that's the kind of possible. I think it would be interesting to kind of evaluate the importance of the evaluation to manipulate the importance of the evaluation and see how this interacts with the um, neuroticism. Because if it is uh, the fact that neurotic, neurotic people uh, tend to evaluate more, then you should like clean up the effect if you 
um, manipulate how important is the evaluation. I don't know if you, if you say what I mean, it was not very clear, but I mean, yeah. if you. I think that it's really about, so you say, uh, you could also do it the other way around. If you increase the importance for non neurotic people, then then they, uh, then you will also get a bigger impact of the parents. Yeah, right, and then you don't see any more the difference, the difference between neurotic and neurotic. So it so has to do with the un tolerance of uncertainty. Yeah. The, more, the more important it becomes to be certain, yeah. the less tolerant uh, people will be of yeah. uncertainty. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Yeah, but, but more generally, I, I was triggered by what you said uh, the, on the impact of, of, of neuroticism on U.S. perception and so on. I think we could put systemat systematicity in the project by in the following way. First of all, you could check, does neuroticism moderate the impact of known, or, or does it have an effect via known moderators? And one of the known moderators is U.S. extremity. Uh, and then you can basically you, you can list all new, known moderators of of uh, health conditioning and see whether uh, neuroticism impacts those moderators. So whether they change the the, the extremity of the U.S. Maybe they change the perception of the contingency. Maybe they I, I don't know. Just list all known moderators and see whether um, neuroticism influences those. That's one approach, that's the moderator approach. And then you have the mediator approach, which is basically you look at all known mechanisms that are thought to produce um, developed conditioning effects. One of them would be an inference account. So you say, okay, people make inferences about how things are related. Uh, they make inferences uh, about, um, yeah, about like drawing the conclusion, eh? that make, is making an inference important or not? So you can look for ways in which neuroticism might be related to the processes that have been proposed as mediating. Yes. So those are basically the two approaches where you could study the relation between EC and neuroticism at the level of the moderator and at the level of the mediator. Mm -hmm. And then I think you'll have a, a nice systematic framework for, uh, for the first one, we can, uh, we have not enough, but we have data both on contingency awareness and on US evaluation. Yeah. So we can be checked with our data whether there is a moderating effect. I mean, this is influencing the moderation effect. Yes. What extent? Yeah. So we can check that. I don't know if you did yeah, collect also have uh, data on this. At mm -hmm. least for that study where we asked also uh, how they perceive the US. Mm -hmm. For the next studies, we only have that on contingency awareness. Did you already check whether people with high neuroticism and low neuroticism, um, what they differ in the way they evaluated the No, we did, we did not check for it. We did check only for okay. the CS, only for uh, the difference okay. in the lack. But, but we did not check. We read the data. Uh -huh. We can check for the re evaluation of the uh -huh. I mean, it's not the re evaluation as such, because we did not ask them to evaluate them. Uh, the first step is the evaluation of the U.S. Yeah. after the experiment. So mm -hmm. I don't know whether this is exactly U.S. evaluation because um, the initial evaluation was not asked. It's only at the end. It was assumed from the IDAPS database the U.S. evaluation. It was selected to be yeah. That's weapon, yeah. But, but uh, even, if, uh, if you, even if you have it only later on, if it is different, <coughs> sure, 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 sure. I mean, the it's so. only yeah. it could have been even better that we didn't think about it for before enough. Mm -hmm. I'm not sure if that makes sense for you, but would you try to consider also the anxiety if it's from the state point of view? So, in a, and so try to manipulate actually the. No, no, we, we haven't tried to manipulate. We only no measured uh, by pranas and. Yeah, the neuro disease much big from Hexaco. Yeah. And now we the one in the yeah. this case. So, so we did, but the, the state, neither of the state uh, measures had an, any effect. Okay, so it's oh. unlikely that manipulation on the state. Could be, but, but not so. in the normal state. Yeah. Well, maybe instead of 
I don't know, maybe the increase in anxiety may be problematic, especially if these people are already neurotic. But maybe uh, the other way, it could be manipulated in the sense of portraying it and seeing whether they begin so to react. I think well. the, the, the uh, intolerance to uncertainty should be manipulated in some way. Mm -hmm. I think it's the but, but even increasing manipulating importance, as you were suggesting, mm -hmm. importance yes. yeah. affects anxiety. That's true. The more it's important, the more you are anxious about whatever happens. So somehow mm -hmm. it's an indirect manipulation mm -hmm. that makes anxiety more uh, impactful in that context. Yeah, but I, I'm seeing from the point of view of the ethical committee, if uh, you're right, okay, I want to make them anxious. <laughs> no, no, but you don't say this at the ethical committee. But <laughs> From a data analytic point of view, uh, so as I told you, the, f the, the first study had uh, two CSs uh, assigned to the four conditions, positive yes, negative yes, neutral yes, and this ambivalent one. Uh, and in the second study, we had only three conditions, if I call. Uh, and again, two CSs per condition, um, positive, negative, and 50% of the time positive, 50% of the time negative. In the, in the fourth study, uh, Polina study, there were four people, four CSs, two males and two females. So, uh, in, in this regard, can we uh, use uh, mixed linear modeling or not, with so little CSs. But so few. How many did the Erika have in your study, CSs? CSs. Yes. Yes. Oh. We are even worse, in the sense we have a mix okay. where an entire confounding between CS and balance and arousal, because I won mm -hmm. by each, because of logistical research was on a, a prolific academic Otherwise, it was too long, so we thought to, to, to reduce the times like this. But we are aware that we have a confounding between the stimuli and the category of the stimuli, because we have only one example by each. So I guess the technical speaking, we, couldn't, we shouldn't even use it this moment, because we think we have a fix. Anyway, or at least no, we can. can no, I mean, but can still, the, it's, it's even worse than your situation. That's okay. what I mean. So it's possible technically, but maybe the uh, reviewer don't like. <laughs> because uh, uh, the, the downsides of the things we have done is that we um, uh, divide the neuroticism in people in five categories. Uh, so. Uh, you don't need to do that. You can do it also without this model. Yeah. You can simply do it. We did it with the correlation that. But at the time, otherwise you do it with uh, uh, So you, you do it in regression? Right? A regression, yeah. simple regression, <laughs> as a, as a, as a yeah, modern fact. Mm -hmm. Yeah, maybe. Mm -hmm. That's but in the experimental world, it was like either a no power or a <laughs> mixed model, so. Traditions. That would be even. <laughs> Okay, thank you then. Uh, we still have time, maybe uh, 10 minutes, and we can walk. Uh, the The bus will not be uh, near the hotel. It will be two minutes from the hotel. We have to walk for two minutes. So if you want, you can go there, or there are some other questions. We still have 10 minutes. If not, Maybe, maybe yeah. one, one point, what I like about the intolerance or uncertainty thing is that you could go from a, uh, a differential approach, basically, personality approach, to an experimental approach. Mm -hmm. Because intolerance or uncertainty implies, okay, there are differences in how, many, how much people can tolerate uncertainty, but you can also manipulate the extent to which uncertain or certainty is necessary or required in the situation. And then you can 
actually pin, pinpoint what, what is it, what is this, uh, mm -hmm. yeah, I like this is about. But if you tell them the, the story about the negative conditioning, uh, it's too strong, <laughs> I know. So one, for one two, you know, between subject design, one group to hear the story that, okay, you will see some CSS pair with US and uh, the research researcher says that uh, the more you pair, uh, the more you start to like those who are positive, so it's too persuasive. And the other group would be naive. No, but I'm thinking in terms of like uh, how important. I guess some some people will not show any doubt conditioning effect simply because they say, uh, I don't, I don't, I don't want to decide. It's just that both equally. Uh, it's just the same thing. Oh, so it but if you if you say you don't know, you'll have to make a choice. That's all. It is. Uh, you have to do something or you lose money or something. Like that. Yeah, something. And then else. they will start using low like low diagnostic tools also. I, I think this can also be within. Yeah, you yeah, can put it in both sides, not only. So if you're among the top 20%, you'll receive extra 4%. If you're not, uh, yeah, yeah. you'll lose. Uh, and the same basically for what Marco is doing with, with, uh, with uh, uh, the arousal and so, or, or what you say, like the relevance of the. the the women, woman with the black, uh, or the black guy. They have to, it, it, it basically comes down to uh, installing or giving information about the, the way things are in the neighborhood. Yeah, so, so if you, if you then give information about uh, fairness, huh? or, yeah. she hit her head. Yes. Door, or she was hit in the yes. Yeah. yeah. I think that those those studies would be really informative if, if you. Combine or or yeah. let's let experimental and differential research uh, inform each other. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's a good idea. Thank you, Danny. <laughs> So we need to augment as well. We find the five minutes here.